What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart. And, um, I'm feeling good. I hope you guys are feeling good too. And, uh, yeah. You know, as always, I want to say thanks for watching the video. Um, you know, still commenting on my videos, liking, sharing, you know, you guys still subscribing. I appreciate you guys so much, man. You know, that's keeping me motivated and keeping me doing this thing. And we here. We here. And today's a special one. Because we're talking about a movie that came out a couple days ago. Straight to streaming. Well... When I say a couple days ago, four days ago to be exact, right? But this movie is so good. It is ridiculous. I literally feel like this film fell into my lap on accident. So I really wasn't meant to watch this film. I watched this film for the wrong reason. So I'll explain. I was watching a film called um, Snake Eyes. I really don't understand how you screw up Snake Eyes, but they managed to screw up Snake Eyes. That movie was awful. Like if I, one out of 10, straight. So yeah, this could double for a review for Snake Eyes as well. Snake Eyes, the movie that came out, what was it? I think 2000 and, oh, I don't know. 2020, 2021, something like that. Film's absolute garbage. Don't watch it. One out of ten. Boom. So I watched that film and so disappointed. So, so disappointed. Switched the film off, went onto YouTube, and I saw the trailer for Prey. And I was like, oh yeah, this movie. Because I saw this movie, when was it? June? You know, about a month ago. A month ago, probably two months, because it was the first of June, and now we are in the beginning of August. So yeah, watching the film and the trailer, and I thought to myself, I wanted to watch this film because I'll be very honest with you, it was because I saw Native Americans. That's why I wanted to watch it. And Predator was a good catalyst to watch that. Because, look, let's be honest, man. Uh, in just films in general, um, Native Americans, uh, these were the, I think they were the Kapachi um, Indians. They've never got a good um, representation in films, you know. And, you know... Hollywood, because of Hollywood, I feel as well, they don't have a very good image, you know, on the big screen, like the stereotype in Hollywood in films, right? Which is not fair, man. So, you know, the world has changed, you know, we, everyone has seen since, you know, Black Panther released. You know, it's shown that the world, we want to see something different. So a lot of things are coming out. You're seeing things like Shang-Chi, you know, and, you know, Prey and all these type of films, right? And we're seeing that the world is more incredible cultures, incredible different ways of living and perspectives and cultures and everything. It's amazing. So I said to myself, I always want, I want to see this. I want to see a film, a big Budget blockbuster movie with Native Americans, Kapachi Indians against Predator? What? Now, this is the thing, right? Long time ago, there was a book I read. It was called, it was Prey actually alien vs predator this is long time ago this was i was skipping school 
to go to a comic book store in central London and it was I'm sure it was Alien vs Predator and it was called Prey. Yeah. And it kinda gave me the idea. Like back in the day, imagine Samurai versus uh, Predator. Imagine Knights versus Predator. Imagine Spartans versus Predator. Imagine Zulu Warriors versus Predator. Imagine Vikings versus Predator. Imagine Kapachi Indians versus Predator. We've all heard legendary stories of these warriors from different races, different cultures. Imagine them versus Predator. I've always wanted to see it. Apache Indians versus Predator, sign me up. So I went to watch it because I don't believe in, I'm sorry to say this right, but I don't believe in the Predator franchise. I don't. They don't get it. They don't understand what it's about. Like the new one, since Pre and Predator 2 was the last good one. So I wouldn't call myself a Predator fan. I wouldn't because I only love Predator 1 and 2. The other ones I don't care about. I don't care about them. They're garb to me, they're garbage, right? But this one, I saw the trailers and it looked l like not low budget, but it looked really, from the visuals, it looked organic. It looked like the scenes looked real like there was a thing where the girls walking near some mountains and it looked like real mountains it didn't look like cg and you saw the sunlight on her and it looked like it was real sunlight on her hmm so that's what kind of caught my interest as well i should walk in like a i don't know like a forest and you saw like trees and grass and these days you don't see that anymore because like a lot of the times these scenes are shot in green screen with like fake lighting you know in unreal engine 12 it's it's never real you never see like you hardly see the person in a scene where real wind is blowing them where it's real sunlight they're really walking the trees they're really sweating this film, you see that. When they're walking in a swamp, it's believable it's a swamp. It looks like they're actually in a swamp. When they're in a forest, it looks like they're in a forest. When you see them in this like sunset, it looks like it's sunset. The film looks organic. It looks... I lost myself in this film. I couldn't believe it. I was watching a film... And I actually lost myself. I forgot I was watching a film and I was just enjoying it. It was, it's incredible, right? And the one thing I'll say is the main character in this movie, her name is Naru. Immediately, I put her up there with Darrington, I'm sorry, with Dutch and Harrington. Tarrington. Yeah, so um, Dutch, you know, from the first movie, um, Harrington from the second movie, and now Naru. Straight away, she goes up there with those two. Straight away. Godlike character, right? Now, the thing is, right, in Predator 1, Dutch was a chosen one, but he didn't awaken to that power of being the chosen one because he relied so much on his weapons on the bombs on the machine guns on the milliguns, guns on the assault rifles on the grenades the hand grenades on the bulletproof armor he relied too much on that stuff it's only when he lost all of that stuff that he had to resort to just 
being he became the predator using the mud to conceal himself having to create chip them traps out of with vines and digging pits and creating wooden stakes he had to become the hunter of nature same thing predator 2 well let's be honest predator 2 with harrington predator just straight got his ass kicked man he made the mistake because harrington as well he wasn't the chosen one well he was the chosen one but even predator couldn't see it he said something was in him but he just wasn't it but there was something about him because of the predator can sense it the one when he sees a chosen one a true warrior and true warriors are generational they they're not like a dime a dozen they're once every generation yeah predator made the mistake of killing harrington's his his brothers his sisters in arms that was the thing that just turned harrington into a fire breathing dragon he sprouted a horn a tail and started breathing fire and that was predator got done he got hounded harassed chased down by harrington who became the embodiment of sheer will and determination to eliminate his enemy predator 2 godlike movie as well another film because in those days the cg wasn't what it is now they focused a lot more using real locations like when you saw somebody sweating it looked like they were sweating like their clothes were sweat and you saw like the sweat underneath their arms and you know they looked exhausted and tired and that movie predator 2 was another godlike movie man and that movie even stands up today maybe the cg doesn't they don't use much cg but when you do see cg with the predator it doesn't look great but the whole film is just amazing this movie naru she is a god like that she no doubt she's a chosen one she is a warrior right um but the thing is right there's something about this character yeah it's like how do i say it man it's like naru she's like um what's that character tatsuya kuroko right like there's a anime called Kuroko no Basket. Yeah, it's about basketball. And this character, Tetsuya, yeah, he is basically, they call him, there's like this, a team, yeah. A six, like there's six of these people in a team, right. And they're called the Generation of Miracles. And Tetsuya is called the Phantom. And the reason they call him the Phantom is kind of disrespectful, uh, if you think about it, right? But he is one of the um, members of the Generation of Miracles because his presence is so, he's so unnoticeable he's pretty much invisible so he moves around the basketball field right and he could just take the ball off of people and people don't even notice when he grabs the ball and then he passes it right he's like their secret weapon right and it's literally because people don't acknowledge him his presence is he literally is invisible but he is the biggest threat because nobody can detect him naru naru is like that to the predator and to her people as well because nobody gives her respect nobody everyone is like you're a woman you're a girl like just go back to the camp and cook meat cook 
and feed us and pick flowers, right? But she is a warrior. She got the heart of a warrior. And she wants to watch. She's like, I, I want to fight. I want to prove myself. That's what I want to do. Stop telling me who I am. who What I can. And what I can do. And what I can't do. Who I am. And what I can and cannot be. And the whole movie is feels like it's that is the... The stereotype they try to put her in and she's fighting against that the only person is her brother who was got that character by the way i think you say i think it was tahabi i'm saying these names wrong i know it yeah but the brother is the one he backs her up he's like the golden child the chosen one but they still the people love that guy. So whenever someone's putting down the sister or telling her, like, you can't go back to the camp, stop messing about, this is like a grow warriors game, and um, what are you doing here? He was like he would in such a smooth, subtle, but proper way, right? Like assertive way, but good. He'll be like he'll get his sister in. Like he'll be like It's okay. So you be able to follow the tracks of us, yeah? Keep up. Let's do it. Let's go. Right? So he give his sister respect. He get her words. He get her confidence. He asks her counsel on certain things. He works in a team with her where everyone doesn't want to. But because they respect him so much, they fall back. Way back. Into the background. Yeah? Yeah? Whenever he like, he backs her up. But when she's not there, they're on her. So there was a part where she fought against like some of the, like, the strongest people in that um that the tribe, right? And she beat the, one of the guys up. Like and it was a proper fight. And you could see the He was physically stronger than her, but she had the evasion and the will. And the technique of being slippery and evasive. And she had a good balance where she was able to use her strength to overcome the guy. And it was so good just to see that, that she weren't a victim. That she's not good against the predator and then weak against humans. Like she was, she's a proper character. A proper good character, man. Because at first when I saw I, I was still not too sure how is she going to fight the Predator. But every single scenario with the Predator, she was the biggest threat that the Predator didn't really acknowledge. Because he was too busy looking at the men with the big weapons. Because there's a lot of scenes where she wouldn't have a weapon in her hands. And if you don't have a weapon and you don't seem threatening, the prince is not going to acknowledge you. He's not. Right? And that was another element in the movie, right? A lot of people in her in um, Naru's tribe, the Kamachi Indians, yeah? A lot they died. They a lot of the warriors, all the warriors died actually. But the thing that was that was fascinating about Everybody, because a lot of the characters were actually really good characters, man. But the thing that was really good was every single person that died, it was like, you know that in Attack on Titans, they sent out the survey corps to go fight the Titans. And even though they know that they're going to die, Every scenario, every troop, every mission, every excursion in which they go to fight the Titans, they bring back a piece of information about the Titans. So even though people die, they will get a little piece of information that they didn't know before about the Titans, which gives them one step closer. Another piece of information. Another piece of information. Another piece of information. Another piece of information. 
another piece of information, another piece of information. Before they've acquired so much information that they know the weaknesses, they know how to battle, they understand the toughness of the Titans, right? So that was what it was in Attack on Titans, yeah? Even though people die, they gather information to help humanity eventually beat the Titans. This movie was the same. It was the same, man. Every single person that died, they were given Nara just that little Naru, just that little bit more information about the Predator, his weaknesses, his techniques, how he stalks, who he goes for, what he goes for, how his weapons work, how fast he is, how he moves, how he stalks his prey, um, how he can detect and see people, how he fights. It was amazing. Everyone that died was given her information. And even there was the part where her brother died, yeah? And which is unfortunate, man, because the brother, M. Tahabe, he was godlike, man. But even in the end, right, because you kind of question a little bit if he, if he did believe in his sister... Like, he support his sister. He very clear, like, he loved his sister. He was, like, the best character, man. He was the best character that didn't have plot armor. You know, uh, she was a very good character because she was so skilled. And because she's so resourceful. And she had... You know, she had plot armor. He didn't have plot armor. But he was a more of a godlike character than she was, right? So when he died, right, fighting the Predator, which a godlike scene, he actually said to her, um, "This is this is where I end. This is the end of my story. Like it ends here for me. But you've got enough information. This is where it ends. This is where you finish him. You get him, Nara." That he was sure that she had been, that she had got so much as more, that uh, all the information needed to finish him. Like when he said it, he was very confident his sister was going to get him. And that's what I'm trying to say. She was a chosen one, but the predator couldn't see it because there was a lot of scenarios where predator kind of had him, had um, um, Naru, and he just left her. Because he didn't see her as a threat. Maybe he saw something in her. But he didn't believe she was threatening enough. Because there were so many other distractions around him. And even, even in the last fight. The last fight was Predator 1 level. Resourceful. The traps. Using the area. Using the location, look at losing all the information that she had gathered from the Predator. Amazing. Amazing. There was like even Easter eggs that connected this movie to Predator 2. Because in Predator 2, when um, Harrington beat Predator and all the Predators came and surrounded him. And they just took the Predator that got defeated. One of the Predators, like the leader, Predator, gave Harrington a gun, like a musket, right? And on it, it said something like, Raphael 1715, or something like that. And in this film, you actually saw Naru got given the gun from the guy. So the guy who owned that gun, Raphael... In 1715 they showed they showed him giving her the gun which basically means if the predator got that gun does that mean that the predators came back for her and killed her or killed one of her descendants to get that gun what does that mean nobody knows right 
But yeah, like that fight was amazing, man. Because the, the reason that she was able to like beat him was because he's got like this mask and it's got like these lasers. And his weapon, he's got like a weapon that fires like a spear, right? Like a, I don't know, like some kind of crazy harpoon, right? And that harpoon will fire to wherever the laser is aimed at. Whatever it is, it will follow. So let's say, for example, the laser is aiming there. And if the predator aims here, it will just shoot there and it will go round and hit wherever the laser is looking, wherever the laser is aimed, right? And she was able to find out because that Raphael guy, right, she was treating him because he got his leg blown off by the predator. She gave him some kind of medication that freezes his body. And when he freezes his body, his temperature is literally freezing cold. Predator can't see because he uses um, thermal sensors to see everybody. She noticed that. So she ate that medicine that basically made her invisible to the predator. The predator, and then she had kidnapped one of the, um, the colonizers that were in that were in the Native America uh, country and used him as bait and then the predator just eviscerated him yeah which is lovely to see by the way and then she um, was saying that this is why I'm killing you right to this to the to the colonizer and she said that and she was also talking to the predator because he underestimated me and he can't see me and that's why I'm the biggest threat. She did something like that. And the predator was coming. She was just standing there. But she wanted to test her theory as well. And then the predator was right behind her. And she just moved to the side just an inch. And the predator literally just walked right by her. Couldn't see her because she'd taken the medicine that makes her body go cold. And it was just the tech. And then she went right behind him. And then she used the gun that Raphael taught her how to use. And then she shot him in the back of the head, which knocked off the helmet. She took the helmet and then ran. And then she, because she had set up a trap, right? And even when the predator got to where the blood trail had left, had led, because she had taken, she'd cut off the leg of the colonizer and dragged it somewhere. And then the predator actually came there found it because he found the blood saw the leg and then when the predator saw the leg you saw fear in the predator the predator saw that it was a trap and he took a step back and you have never seen the predator take a step back ever because the predator realized he'd walked into a trap and it was godlike and then she's the one that got him jumped on him axed him on his head took the helmet and it was like a proper scuffle and it worked because he was overpowering her but she was using her evasiveness to outsmart him and the fact that he couldn't really see her properly man that fight was so good bro it was an incredible like the whole movie shockingly good shockingly good man even the way she got him into the final scenario where she put the helmet to shut because there was a swamp that she got caught in a little bit earlier in the film. She led him to that part, wrapped the vines around his neck, pulled him into the swamp. After she'd done like some mad technique and ran up the tree, he punched the tree, injured himself. She set him up, he went to punch her, he punched so hard into the tree that his hand got stuck. She tried to attack him, he deflected her sword, and then he cut off his own arm on accident. But it was done so well. Like, the way she set him up was ridiculous. Got him where she wanted, and then he fired the um, arrow, the spear, or the harpoon laser at her. And then it went round... And then it followed to where the laser is. And then he turned around. Because he's like, what is going on? And then he saw his own helmet shining at him. And then a harpoon 
just impaled him in the face. And then she let off some, some wild battle cry like, ho, 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 or something like that. And it was amazing. Amazing. It was, it was like, it was like Predator 1 all over again, man. And it was just, that movie is amazing. I literally cannot wait to watch that movie again. I mean, the good thing about it being on streaming, I can watch it. It's on Hulu and Disney Plus, right? So, the good thing about it is you can keep on watching it as much as you like. The bad thing about it is it didn't come out in cinema. It's such an unfortunate shame that such a good movie has come out straight to streaming. And you've made the movie with Native Americans. They're getting a good, a real big break. But you're getting to see their culture, their people, the way they live, their beliefs, their tradition. And it's straight to streaming. Like, it's such a shame, man. Because I know there's millions upon millions of people that are not going to get to watch this. Because a lot of people don't have Hulu. A lot of people don't have Disney Plus. It's not in the cinema. How do you watch it? It's so unfortunate because this movie is a 10 out of 10. That's how good I like this film. This movie is a straight 10 out of 10. Amazing film. I would 100% recommend you watch this movie. Um, if I was to say... The order in terms of best predators, there's only really three. To want to see you, uh, I would say Predator One is number one, right? It's one of the best films I've ever seen in my life, right? Let alone best predator movie. I don't know what's better, Prey or Predator Two. I'll say Predator Two and Prey are on the same level. They're both joint two. I want to say that and I'll leave it at that it's joint too and I don't want to say or admit any different because of how much I love Predator 2 and I don't want to disrespect it so I don't know man I want to say this is the best movie since Predator 1. Joint with Predator 2. I'm leaving it there. So yeah. Prey. Incredible movie. Beautiful movie. Epic movie. I would 100% recommend you watch it. It's a rare film. Where. It hardly looks like they used any CG in the movie. Everything looks so organic, like everything was shot on location. The only thing that, you know, is CG is, you know, of course, Predator when he's in his cloaked form, right? Um, there, um, there was a bear scene, like a bit where the Predator fought a bear, and that bear was blatantly CG, right? That was a little bit not great, right? Uh, but it was still okay. But, yeah, other than that... Everything just looked organic and just real. So yeah, as I said again, pray. Absolutely godlike film. 100% you ever watch it. If you want to see some good action, good characters, good story, a proper Predator movie with good story, good pacing, amazing characters, and just get lost in a film that doesn't look like it's filmed on sets. It actually looks like an organic movie shot in real locations with real sunlight, real rain, real sweat, real, just real wind. Which I know sounds silly, but it's something you don't see anymore in this age of just CG, right? So it's just a refreshing, beautiful 10 out of 10 movie. Warriors, that's my review for Prey. Thank you for watching. 
Thanks for sticking it out with me. You know I appreciate you guys. Um, life is good, man. Life is good. I hope you guys are doing good too. Um, if you do get to watch the movie, or if you've already watched the movie, let me know what you think. Um, did I leave out any parts in, uh, out of this uh, review? Let me know. Because it was, you know, a lot happened in the film, man. Film was short, I'll be honest with you. It was like... The film felt like it was like 20 minutes. It was like an hour and 30 minutes. But it felt like it was 20 minutes, right? And when a film is an hour, over an hour and a half, but it feels like it's 20 minutes, that's when you know you watch a good movie. So, Warriors, I want to say thank you for watching. Take care. Stay blessed. And I will catch you in the next video. Laters.